Yesterday, we told you how in 2017, we had made pump and pageantry. Our roads minister had won a very fine suit, and I want to buy one of those suits when I grew up at his age. Wear a fine red tie, went to shake hands with a person living with disability who was, had been given a job, 74 of them initially, at the toll booths. We were all excited about it. And our citizens, when things are not going the way they're supposed to go, especially the things that we have been told will be done in a particular way, we have a right to speak up. And Mr. President, you may be basking in the defense of the sycophants around you because there are too many of them, including presidential staffers who are on social media, not doing presidential staff work, but rather fighting the people who gave you the mandate to rule. Mr. President, that's a big thing you need to look at because the level of sycophancy and hypocrisy is too much. People cannot continue being sycophants and hypocrites and be paid with the taxpayers' money. And then when they are asked or, or asked to account for what it is that they have done with the time, energy, resources, and all the things that have been laid at their disposal, and then they get angry. This is not what you meant when you asked us to be citizens, not spectators. And I'll demonstrate to you in a little while that people think that speaking up for persons living with disability, people think that speaking up for nation builders called beneficiaries who have promised permanency, who are now demanding and asking for you to make good your promise to them that 72,000 out of the 79,000 of them will be retained when you were in Bono in 2021, 20, uh, August 11, when you were in Bono on your Bono tour, you had given them the, 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 the assurance, Mr. President, People think talking about things like that means that you are giving the party or the government a bad name. The question I ask is this. Is the government in power, even in the first year of getting a second term, to think about the next election? Or is the government in power, in the first year of their second term, to think about the delivery of the public good? That's a question, Mr. President. Because when you are elected, if you had been a new government, they would not have been interested in the next election almost immediately. But it does appear that the narrative is different. And in Africa, that's a very big problem. I thought that Ghana would have been different, but we are continuing in that direction. So the people who are supposed to help you to deliver the public good are the very people who are now chasing people and tagging people and harassing people and making people feel uncomfortable and, and because they are speaking up. So you find that people have kept quiet. That's not a good sign. Mr. President, I'll demonstrate to you this morning the level of hypocrisy. One is that in 2016, let's go back and look at the electoral records in 2016. You won and us had been trumpeted by your own people, but one million votes. We bragged about it. We spoke extensively about it. This was coming from a, a government that had ruled eight years prior. Okay, and another had ruled eight years after, soon after, after, after that. So you're making reference to achievements of, the, of, the, uh, um, of President Kufo, the much less President Kufo as he's called, the gentle giant. Now in 2016, you were able to make almost one million votes or thereabout. We spoke about it, unprecedented electoral win, landslide victory, give it all the accolades. Fast forward to 2020, when one district, one factory, one village, one dam were planting for food and jobs, rearing for food and jobs, all of those things had been done. One constituency, one ambulance, one, uh, 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 one million per constituency, all of those things had been done. The electoral record showed that the one million votes were halved. But you see, the hypocrites around you are not drawing your mind to that, Mr. President. They are interested in telling you that your main opposition, who has not been in power for four years, was able to come up at six million votes apiece and even halved what you got in 2016. That's the level of hypocrisy. They are not telling you the truth. And the, the numbers that left your side with the loyalty and all the uh, affection and affinity that they had to you electorally, who left it tells you that the people all together are not happy with you. And they are not happy because they are looking at the manifesto that was presented to them in 2016. 
they are looking at the manifesto that's been presented to them in 2020. Now, the thing is, I get a contract to, to execute a job. I get a deputy contractor to support me. I have not finished the job that has been given to me, which will be my launch pad for the next contract. But I'm already asking for another contract. Who does that? Who does that? Deliver the public good because people are complaining. Prices of food are high. Petrol is high. This is that. Lights go up these days. We don't call it doom. So I call it doom CSC. That's what we've been told to call it. We accept it. But people are complaining about the generality of stuff. And we don't care. We are all interested in defending. That's the level of hypocrisy. And that's not why we voted for you, Mr. President. Respectfully. Now, the, the, the other folks who voted for you, which I showed you three videos yesterday. Persons living with disability, one person who lived as far as Uyarefa or someplace around there, he knows that there's a tow boat around Dodua. That tow boat has I've been taken away from him, even though it was given to him in 2017. Now he has been asked to go all the way to Kaswa. And we do know how uncomfortable our transport system works in this country. When you have a, 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 a wheelchair, it becomes difficult for you to get in and out, to and fro. He's been asked to go and work there. How much are we even paying them? Do we pay them a thousand, thousand, five thousand, two? We don't pay them that. We all know the truth. How much do we even pay NAPCO beneficiaries? National service personnel, how much do we pay them? 559. But we are all trying to fit in because it is our country. We must develop and we must have a developmental agenda, not a partisan agenda that has closed its eye to every sane voice and every sane mind. That's the thing we are talking about. Because when GRA comes to collect their taxes, they don't ask you whether you are NDC, MPP, CPP, PPP, or UPP, or whatever it is. They don't ask you. They take their taxes. When the local assembly comes to take their property rate, they don't ask you who you are. They take their money. So when we have all contributed to the national kitty, and some persons are enjoying the national kitty in the name of salaries and uh, fuel allowance and transport allowance and accommodation allowance and AD camp and bodyguards and all of that, when we ask them to account for, to us what they have done with our, our resources, they should be humble enough to ask it. Because when they were following you, Mr. President, to ask for a mandate to rule, that was not their tone. Today, their tone has changed. Now, they talk down at us. Now, today, I'll show you a lady who is a tow booth, uh, was a tow booth um, operator. And we were so happy when they were given. I'll say this again. We we're so happy. I was so happy because... I had worked with the likes of the OT regional minister, Mr. Joshua Makubu, on disability issues. I had worked with Mr. Deborah or the Ghana Federation for Disability on disability issues. I had done more than 50 OBs outside broadcast for Community Connect with Star Ghana on disability issues. So I am on top of the disability issues. That nobody can take from me. Now I'm saying that even with all of those things, we spoke with those people. Those people are in a position, positions of pride up until now. Listen to the testimony of this lady who used to work in the Ashanti region, whose job has been taken away from her because they, she was, they were told that the road was going to be fixed. And after the roads were fixed, they will bounce back to work. And that in the interim, they'll be giving their salaries to survive. Persons living with disability, even able-bodied NAPCO people say they can't find job. Persons living with disability. Danny, play the video. Nana, up to now, on for good to Ninsu, I can't so on for my call one year next month on the ninth. Now, one year you try a cut that I can't so the debut to you. I was a more fire shim. Now, come to try a cup crammy and sacquiano and so yen tissue and yet if you yen tissue and yet if you ya bow and I ya bow ministry one of me a bay. Ya one about my quarter will be no share yo or my dalashin say. Young company no my bedji a jumano. Yoko company no ho 
She made an appeal. She says, speak for them. Who will speak for them? The Ghana Federation for Persons Living with Disabilities are quiet. My good friend Joshua Makubu, Regional Minister for T-Region, is quiet. The CSOs, civil society organizations who work with them, are quiet. Should the media shut up too? Can we look on while persons living with disability? And I've said, their brains are working. Their hands are working. It is their legs that are not functional. And they have elected not to be a nuisance to society, to be on our roads, to be begging for money, to be knocking on your windshield and your, and your windows. They have decided to do the honorable thing. And I'll say it again, that when that opportunity was given to them to be the sole uh, uh, persons who will man, man the um, tow boots, I was happy about it. Not just me. A lot of people were happy. So what changed? What has changed? Now look at the Disability Act, 715. It says the 715th Act of the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana entitled Persons with Disability Act 2006. An act to provide for persons with disability to establish a national council of persons with disability and to provide for related matters. It's assented to in 2006, enacted by President and Parliament, Rights and Persons with Disability. One, right to family life and social activities. Listen to it. A person with disability shall not, which means it's mandatory, the state owes them that obligation. The Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection owes them that obligation. Shall not be deprived of the right to live with that person's family or right to participate. Listen, in social, political, economic, creative or recreational activities. That's why lawyer Dana was made a minister for chieftaincy affairs. Even though he's a person living with disability, he didn't have vision. No eyesight. That's why Mr. Joshua Makubu has been made a minister for the T region. Even though he's a person living with disability. But because his head and his hands are functioning, his heart is a good heart. They are patriotic individuals. It says... They must participate because they have a right to participate in social, political, economic. That's where the thing is. Economic. Economic. Now, differential treatment in respect of residents, all of that. We'll, 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 talk, we'll talk about that later. But play for me the second video. The second video of a gentleman who also had uh, some allegation of theft leveled against him. He was almost coerced into agreeing that he took the money and he was asked that, well, the money will be deducted from his salary so long as he continues to work. And then they come back to say, oh, because the money is huge, we think that it will take too long a time for you to be able to pay. So go home. Take a listen. Yeah, master, press, no record. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. This, uh, my name is Manu Moses. I was working at Kaswa Tobut as a tour attendant. So one day we have been told that the coordinator that will be having a meeting that will be on that was on 21st July 2020. That some of the officers will be coming from the TML to interview us. So the very uh, one that uh, the following day we went there and we gathered at this in the entrance over there. So when they came, I was the first person they called in the office. So the lady was their human resource manager. So she started with me by asking me that. When they cross check on their computer, they realize that I've stolen their 6,000 Ghana I said, no, the fault may come from their computer. So at the end of the day, she did not agree that the computer will not, cannot lie. So she further asked me that I cannot work with them so that they will be deducting from my pay to finish the money. I said, yes. But in my mind, I knew very well, you know, you know take any password from their job. She further questioned me. That as the money is very huge, how long would it take from a pay to be finished the money? So because of that, I should know on the 21st July 2020 that my contract has been terminated. So I came home 
when I came home, I sat home two years, no, one year, four months today, as a person with disability. I can't do any hard job to survive my life. And the government knew very well that just because we can't do any hard job, this initiative was given to us by him. And I even told that this in the human resource manager that when we were working under Ghana highways, we do not experience such behavior. But why is it that the contract has been given to them? Then they start a second person with disabilities and replacing them with the what? Able people. But they claim when they sack a person with disability, they replace with the same person with disability. But it's a lie. Uh, they sack us and replace them with us with what? Their friends, families, and other people. So we are, we are appealing to government to intervene so that this uh, person with disability who were sacked from this at the very two bush to be sent back to their jobs. So at the end of the day, we can also get something small to feed our family. Even as I'm speaking to you now, the place of abode is a problem to me. As I'm speaking, I tend as a what? Dependent on my parents who are at home, at north, to take care of me and my friends. So I'm appealing that governments will intervene so that those who were sacked with a person with disabilities should be sent back to their various job places. He's depending on his parents in the north. What is the economic situation in the north? And we ask them to remember us. Shook hands. The Minister for Roads with Stella. We make big news out of it. And I maintain this was a good initiative. Why persons with disability have now been taking off. It's sad. And this is not an attack on government. This is an advocacy for persons living with disability. It's part of journalism. Hello? So don't allow your, your red, blue, and, and white, and your green, black, and white to enter your head to start reading political meanings. This is advocacy for persons living with disability because they don't have the kind of platforms that we have. They don't have the kind of voices that we have. And if you notice the videos I showed you from yesterday, some of them didn't want to show their faces. You could hear their voices, but they won't want to show their faces. Why? They fear stigmatization. Why do we do this to ourselves? So what did the president mean when he said we should be citizens and not spectators? These are citizens of Ghana. They are asking you, remember them. Persons living with that, the cripples, forgive me, cripples. We have taken the jobs away from them. What would they eat? Good morning.